When packing your pack, it's important to follow the ABCs of pack packing. A is for accessibility, B is for balance, C is for compact, and D is for dry. Keeping those in mind, I'm going to start fitting all of my gear into my backpack. In terms of keeping things dry, you've got a couple options. A lot of backpacks will come with a pack cover, which is basically a rain jacket for your backpack, or you can purchase one in addition to your pack. I prefer to use a heavy duty trash bag as a liner inside my backpack. I've found that sometimes these pack covers uh, don't always cover the entirety of my back and then water can seep into my pack anyway. So by using this bag within a bag method, I've been able to keep all of my stuff dry in some really wet climates. Now in determining what to put in my bag first, I'm gonna focus on A, accessibility, and B, balance. I don't wanna pack something I'm gonna need while I'm hiking on the trail in the very bottom of my bag. So something like my sleeping bag, I'm not gonna need during the day. Also, when I'm trying to pack a balanced bag, it's important that I have a broad base of support down on the bottom, and my sleeping bag will give me that. You'll notice that I have a zipper here for um, a sleeping bag compartment. I'm not using that zipper just because I have my trash bag inside my bag. Um, you are welcome to just use this as a designated sleeping bag compartment. And you'll notice while I pack my bag that I'm really stuffing my sleeping bag deep down in there. Um, if there's a spot where I don't have anything in my backpack, it's gonna look wrinkly and empty like this. So I'm gonna stuff things down to fill those empty spaces. When I think about weight distribution, I want most of the heavy things in my backpack to be towards the center of my back so that I'm holding it where my body is strongest. Uh, the heaviest things that I have to pack are my food and my kitchen gear. All my food here, it's already been distributed between me and the people that I'm uh, going hiking with. And I've got all these little tiny kitchen things that I can actually just pack inside my pot. This pot is an example of what I call dead space. So if I were to pack my pot just like this, then I've got all this space that's not being taken up by any of my gear. So I can put my fuel bottle, my stove, soap, eating utensil and lighter all inside that pot, and that's gonna help save me a lot of space. I'm gonna put this pot, which has some heft to it now, right on top of my sleeping bag. And instead of just setting it on top of my sleeping bag, I'm really gonna push it on down there. Food is gonna be pretty heavy. Um, because I've got Ziploc bags, which can be slightly fragile, I wanna make sure that the Ziploc bags aren't packed next to the edges of my pot, which could be slightly sharp. So I'll start with things like my peanut butter, my summer sausage, and my tomato paste, which can't really be ruptured by that pot. And I'm keeping those bulkier items like the peanut butter and the summer sausage really close to the back of my pack, which means it's gonna be closer to my back. If I packed it close to the front of my pack, then it might pull me over backwards. Every time I put something new in my backpack, I'm looking at the outside of my pack for any of those wrinkly, empty looking spaces that I can stuff something else in there to fill. Next, I'm gonna pack my sleeping pad. Again, it's something that I don't need during the day, and it's kind of an awkward shape, which means I wanna pack it really soon in my packing process. That way, I can bring soft things like my clothes down and around the edges that it'll leave. Next, I'll pack my tent. Um, my backpack is big enough that I could probably just pick up my tent and put it in my backpack, but if I had a smaller bag or if I was limited on space, it might be smarter to pack my tent outside of this bag. What that enables me to do is stuff the soft parts of my tent in those dead space areas. 
Visualize a bag of sugar versus a bag of potatoes. The bag of potatoes has a lot of air space inside that bag, and the bag of sugar is gonna be a little bit more svelte and compact. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this giant potato and turn it into a bag of sugar inside my pack. Tent poles can be a kind of tricky thing to pack. You can either try and stuff them to the side of your pack on the inside, or you can always strap them to the outside, whatever you prefer. Because I have such a big pack for what I'm doing here, I'm gonna go ahead and stuff them down on the inside. Next up, I'm gonna pack my water filter. This is something I might want accessible during the day. So I'm actually gonna put it in my outside pouch. Now I left my clothes till last because they're soft, so they're easy to stuff down into those uh, dead air spaces. I'll start with these smaller items like gloves and socks uh, because again, they're pretty easy to push all the way into the deep recesses of my pack. Now there's two types of backpackers. There's people who fold their clothes very nicely, and then there's people like me who just tend to stuff things wherever they happen to fit. Either one is totally fine. And I actually wanna leave my rain jacket out and accessible because that's an item that I might need right away. Another warm jacket, cram her on down in there. The last item I'm gonna pack in the main compartment of my backpack is my water bladder. The reason I left this till last is because it's something I might need to refill throughout the day, so I want it to be accessible. If it's all the way down in the bottom of my pack with my other heavy things, I'm gonna need to unpack and then repack everything throughout the day. Now, anytime you're using a water bladder, there is a risk of the bladder either leaking or popping. And if this one does that today, I don't want it to get anything in this pack wet. So I'm gonna fold down my trash bag to make a barrier between my water bladder and everything that I want dry. And then I'll just set this bladder on top of everything in the main compartment of my pack. So now I can go ahead and seal up all my drawstrings and straps on that main compartment because I'm done with it. A lot of backpacks have an integrated water pouch holder. They take up a lot of space right through the main part of my pack. And I would rather use that space for my items to be well balanced and distributed. These items that I still have are items that I am definitely going to need through the day. I've got my rain jacket, um, I've got my compass, a snack, a trowel, my headlamp, a sun hat, first aid kit, and maybe a warm layer just in case it gets cold. So these are things that I'm not going to need to stop on the trail and explode everything in my pack just to get to these simple things. They're going to go in the top compartment of my pack, which is called the brain. And my brain's actually a little bit small for what I have out, so my first aid kit I'm going to go ahead and put in my front pouch with my water filter. Now I'm going to revisit my C, compact. You'll see I've got a lot of straps just hanging out around my pack, and if I pull these tight, I can make my pack even smaller. Now I'll buckle my brain down so it doesn't tip back and hit me in the head while I'm hiking. All right, and then I'm kneeling on my sleeping pad. I'm gonna bring it with me even though I packed an inflatable pad just to give me something to sit on at camp. And it just folds up nice and small and straps to the bottom of my pack on the outside. The fact that this pack is sitting up by itself is a really good sign. It means that it's well balanced. And a well balanced pack is one that's gonna sit well on your back. If my pack was leaning to one side, it would also lean to one side while it's on my body, meaning I'm gonna be walking slightly lopsided or be more sore on one side than the other. So when you leave camp in the morning, you always wanna make sure that that pack is able to stand upright on its own. And that's how you know you're in for a good day of hiking.